Who changed the game the most this year? Let's do a deep dive and find out who had Legendary Azura and Brave Hector levels of influence on the game. Now, just a reminder, we're looking at Gen 8. So this is August, way back with the CYL banner up until the last Mythic banner, which is July 2024. But let me know in the comments, who's your favorite unit from this last year? Grant me your power. Attuned Micaiah is the peak of the warp meta that is such a critical cog in how our game works right now. Anyone can warp using this unit. Now, is Far Trace Echo absolutely groundbreaking? Absolutely not. But let's look at this wall of text here just to kind of dig into what exactly we're getting. And this is healing, guidance five, an omni chill, exposure, discord, and most of all, that mini frayer effect where she knocks off the first two penalties that you have on your unit. This is a lot of stuff, and we're gonna talk a lot about this when we talk about the top five best, but this is a very synergistic kit. On top of all of this, one of the big ways she's getting damage is through the enemy's debuffs. Looking at the latest support tier list, this unit is clearly tier zero, and this is one of the most competitive archetypes in the game right now. All of these units are very good and usable. This unit is great because of roll compression. She can do so many things, but let's look at how she ranks as an attuned unit. Now I've gone back and forth on this and this is clearly a top one or two and it really depends on how you wait. The only reason I have Peony above her is because Peony can get more skills to fodder off. If you're looking purely as a unit, Micaiah has her beat, so that depends on what you prioritize. But there is such an incredible value in a top tier unit who is also a fodder factory. All of the fodder you put on this unit can then be sent to someone else. Summoners, that is a big, big deal. In the last six months, range flyers have gotten a ton of options, including Resonance 4 and Breath of Life. All of that's incredible and is why I give this unit a 10 out of 10 in both fodder and utility and why she is just neck and neck with Peony. So to summarize, this unit is an amazing nuke, an amazing support, and an amazing fodder factory. This is a must summon, but let's talk about an amazing refresher. Let's give it our all. Duo Robin has everything. Tons of stats, damage reduction, null guard, omni lull, true damage, piercing, and this duo skill is sneaky good. Rally Spectrum is already excellent, allowing a special jump, but dual strike in a duo skill is actually very handy. At the end of an AR match, it can help you clear out units, and if you're talking about summoner duels, of course this is an excellent thing to be able to use. I've said this in many of my videos, and I stand by it, if you're plus 10-ing one unit this year, this is it. And you're gonna ask, why am I so confident in that? Simply put, just look at the past. Refreshers age incredibly well. I've got a few in that archetype up here right now. Not all of these units just absolutely changed the game, but understand all of them, no matter how bad their design, are still very usable. And I know you Fallen Crom haters are gonna come after me, but listen, even though this isn't the best unit, this is still a good Gale Force unit and the hate has gone too far. But back to Duo Robin, one of the big things about this unit is the scowl effect and you gotta understand how rare this is. These are the non-dragons that have scowl right now and only one of them has it built into their weapon. Two of them have to be within two spaces. So understand, putting it on the enemy mid-turn makes it incredibly hard to cleanse and very, very powerful. And the biggest thing is it's the absolute best counter versus Emblem Ike. If we look at the refreshers tier list that I did not so long ago, I had this unit ranked number two and I still have them very high. Having Robin right next to Peony is high praise and just shows you how influential this unit can be. So this unit is valuable in absolutely every mode. But let's talk about someone a bit more toxic. Love and gratitude. Intelligent systems loves their villains. And this is 
clearly the most toxic unit of Gen 8 and arguably one of the most toxic units ever made. If you look just at the effects, they have sweep, piercing, lots of burn damage at a level that we had not seen before. And then this end turn effect that comes in both the weapon and the duo skill. If we're looking at that briefly, there are only three units that have that capability. And I actually thought they handled it fairly well when we're talking about the Sathers. It was limited in use and you had a lot of counters to it. Whereas Duo Leon, if they survived an attack, they would be able to end the unit's turn with the highest speed. And that carried over into the next turn. But that wasn't bad enough with that duo skill ending the turn of all units in a row. That is insane and absolutely destroyed summoner duels. If we look at the unit's ratings during the time of this support tier list, the combat of 20 really reflects that burn damage and how influential it was at the time. This unit would destroy so many things. The big way around this unit was you had to somehow outmaneuver them, either by ending their turn in air before they even got to attack, or by pre-planning in summoner duels and not letting the opponent get into a position to be able to use that duo skill. Because of all that is why I had this unit ranked so high in the support heroes tier list. The fact of the matter is, the best support is not letting your opponent act at all. And understand, that's still true right now. The big nerf to Leon is through Breath of Life, which absolutely changed how this unit interacted because it took away some of the roll compression. This is still an excellent unit, but he is no longer in a tier all on his own because his nuking ability isn't quite what it was. But this is very familiar to a lot of the units we've seen before. And I want you to think about something. Duo Leon is this year's Fallen Edelgard. If you really look back at Fallen Edelgard, her reign was very short, but it made a knowledge check for players who were unfamiliar with how she worked. Duo Leon was similar, and I expect another one of him next year. We'll see who that is. But next, let's talk about a unit that expanded what we did in Aetherade's offense. A beautiful night. Winter Edelgard brought Gale Force to the masses, and I understand that Summer Edelgard did this to a lesser extent, but this is not an iteration of Summer Edelgard. This is an evolution. Look at this. This is affects our Divine Vein Flame, huge dots, special jumping, piercing, ignores miracle, plus one movement and charge, plus she gets three actions. This is the perfect Gale Force unit. But the thing you need to look at is the cost of a Gale Force team that includes Winter Edelgard. And this is something I did in the Gale Force analysis. This is 259 orbs. This means in the period of a month, you could have a Gale Force team up and running. That's incredible and makes this strategy so much more accessible. The problem is she single-handedly changed the way that Aether Raid's defense works because now everyone had to accommodate for this unit. Keep in mind, Gale Force had fallen off quite a bit. This unit brought it back in force and made sure that so many greens wanted to be on your defense to be able to resist this unit. I want you to remember she was sparkable. I made a meta report earlier in the year about the action meta, and at that time we were in the three action meta, but that, that is one of the things that makes this unit so powerful. Three actions and incredible movement. I just want you to take in the fact that we are entering the four action meta, so there are more Gale Force shenanigans to come. We are now eight months later and this unit is still tier zero. I use this unit every week and even though her killing power has fallen off, she is still here to stay for a very long time. But let's talk about the free to play savior. Lodestar Rush. Emblem Marth bringing slaying to all was huge. And I want you to remember this is an honorable mention. And the reason is you kind of have to separate the unit and the ring. 
as a unit, he has damage reduction, piercing, dive bomb, null guard, and super potent, which gives you the 100% damage for all three of the hits. This unit kills things, and you have to understand as an infantry unit, this is a very upgradable hero. This is my current build, and to be honest, there's not a whole lot this unit struggles against. But the point is, this is an excellent nuke, but we've seen a lot of excellent nukes. That is not enough. You have to have other things. So what is so special about this unit? This is a graph from my Sharana video that's basically talking about how expensive it is to have older units compete. And the big thing I want you to look at here is Marth, giving this unit an extra cooldown, allowing Aether to be proc'd reliably. Every other piece of this unit is very expensive. Understand that even the mythics can only be used half the time and this fodder has to be upgraded constantly. The thing about this Marth ring is you can move it around and use it on a lot of different units regardless of who they are. It is incredibly powerful and something that believe it or not, I do consider to be free to play friendly because of only having to summon Marth once than being able to move him to whoever you want. Older units need this so badly. It is a critical piece in how to get these units working again. And I know so many of you like to get your older units working. It's why I think this unit is so influential. And if we look at the rankings for Emblem Heroes in general, it's why I have this unit ranked over Celica. I understand that Celica is an incredibly powerful ring, but I also have to say, we have a lot of warping, a ton of it. We just talked about Micaiah. When we're looking at the meta overall, I think it is a bigger influence to be able to take older units and boost them up, as opposed to creating one more way to warp. And Celica fans, don't come after me. She's still in tier zero. That's very, very good. But we need to talk about a unit that truly rocked the meta. Great Ether! Emblemike is the ultimate tank. Now, the ring for Emblemike hasn't been quite as impactful, but look at this unit. This kit is very, very efficient. I mean, let's just go over the skills here. This is healing, no counter disrupt, in combat debuffs and buffs, savage blow, null guard, pulse smoke, true damage, forced desperation, lots of damage reduction, both pierceable and non-pierceable, and of course, distant counter. Now, all of this can be amazing, and we've seen this before where they just throw effects in, but the real measure of how good a unit is, is their matchups, right? And we have them right here. Now, I know, I know this makes it look like Ike is just absolutely unbeatable, and sometimes it feels that way, but understand this is really just head to head, and Ike does have Divine Vein Stone. The point of this is more that it takes a team to get Ike down. And that is why he has just completely warped the way we do defenses. It's no longer a thing where, oh, I have this one unit in case they bring Ike that can completely end him. And then I can worry about Winter Edelgard and Attuned Erica and Summer Alir with all of my other units. Oh no, you really need half of your team at least to be able to take on Ike. Even then, he can be very, very tough. If we look at the rankings, and this really drives it home because I finally just had to give him a tier on his own. And I, I know the newer Omni tanks are very good, but I'm telling you, they still don't come close to this unit. It's why the meta reports have been kind of harder to do lately because basically they're like, Ike is good and you need to counter him. When we look back at this year, we truly do look at before Ike and after Ike. Even his fodder changed the game in Lagoo's Friend 4. This unit is incredible and will probably be that way for some time because just as much as IS loves their villains, they love their heroes more and they keep seeming to give this unit more and more things to play with 
like Breath of Life 4. So this is your top five. I'd love for you guys to tell me how would you guys have ranked these folks? Is there someone you would have included that I didn't? If you're interested in seeing the top five worst of last year, I have that video linked here. Members, you are amazing. Thank you for all you do. Take care and schedule an appointment with your phaeologist real soon.